Hello YouTube, in this video I'll show you how I set the valve latch clearance for any type of engine. In this case I'm working with the Cummins 5.9 litre 12 valve diesel engine. You could apply the same principle or information I'm going to provide in this video for any type of engine, gasoline or diesel. The valve latch clearance has big effect on the performance of the engine. And it's really cheap, it doesn't cost much. You just need to make sure to clean the engine so you don't get any contaminant when you open the engine cover. And then you need one of these filler gauge. If you buy it online, it's probably less than 10 bucks. For this engine, it has a data tag on the side. It shows the firing order of the engine. And it has the clearances required for the intake and the exhaust valve. Some engines, they have more than one valve per uh, uh, exhaust or intake. So you need to make sure uh, to apply the same clearances to both valves. If you have more than one valve, if you have two valves, for the intake and two for the exhaust, you need to do the same thing. For this engine, it requires 10 thousandths of inch clearance for the intake valve and 20 thousandths of inch for the exhaust valve. This is common to a lot of engine. Uh, the exhaust is subject to heat, the exhaust valve, and it will expand with heat. So you need to allow more clearance because if this clearance less than specification and if the valve expand, then the valve will not seal in the compression stroke and this will cause loss of performance. So if you have a performance issue, uh, this is very cheap. You could go ahead and try uh, to solve it this way. Hopefully you don't have other issues like injector pump or carburetor or injectors or any other issue, uh, depend on the engine uh, type that you have. I will explain to you a few things in detail on how to figure out the top dead center for the cylinder. You need the cylinder to be a top dead center to be able to uh, adjust the valve because they will be set at the compression stroke and then I'll explain to you how to figure it how to figure it out if you don't have uh, uh, marking on the crankshaft or if you don't have uh, in this case they have a little bushing you pull out uh, under the injector pump and it has a circle when you spin the engine it will line up with the hole and that will be piston number one top dead center and usually the relationship between the crankshaft, what move the cylinders, and the camshaft, what move the valve, is two to one ratio. So every two rotation on the crankshaft, it will move the camshaft one rotation. If you can figure this information, you could remove the injectors or the spark blocks and use your finger and rotate the engine manually. And when you feel compression, then take screwdriver and be careful, don't scratch the top of the piston or the cylinder. Hold it gently and spin your engine until the piston come to the very top. That will uh, release both valves. They will be in the closed state and that when you set your lash clearance. I'll take the camera and i show you a few things. I already washed the engine. I'm doing other stuff to this engine. And I thought that may be a good idea to record this video. Hopefully it helps somebody. Some engines, they have a data tag, or if you have a manual, and this will show you the firing order and the lash clearance. In this case, it shows the firing order 153624, and it also shows the clearances for the intake and the exhaust valve. This information is useful because if you set it on top dead center on number one, sometimes they have marking on the pulley over there, or in this case, they have this tool over there. You pull it out and you set a mirror and you rotate the engine manually. You could put wrench on the side. This one has some type of tool. You put it on the other side and you could rotate the engine. And you have somebody watching from here until a circle appear. And it's in the center of this bushing. And that's mean uh, cylinder number one, tap dead center. And you could actually do both valve for cylinder number one, and then you could do uh, the other valves minus number six, cylinder number six, because it's opposite to number one. Both one and six, they are at the top when you uh, set number one on top. So you could do half of them minus six, and then you could mark the pulley if it doesn't have already marking for the advance and all that. Sometimes they have marking on the engine and on the pulley for that. Uh, you could rotate the crank uh, 360 degrees, and then you could do number six 
and the other valves minus one. On this one, I'm not going to show you this because if you already know this, then you already advanced and you don't need help watching this video. I will show you how to figure out each individual cylinder. So you could set the lash clearance without knowing, without you know all this information. I am going to show you this camshaft out of this twin, a small engine, a twin cylinder. All camshafts are built the same, regardless of how many cylinder that engine. For this particular engine, when piston number one is at the compression stroke, when it's all the way to the top, and the timing is set for this to be at the compression stroke, then both lobes of the camshaft, these two lobes, the last one and the third one, they activate the valves, the intake and the exhaust of that piston. And those will be pointing away or all the way down. So they will be set like this. And what this does, this will allow the lifters to be all the way down for both valves. The bush rod will be all the way down and the rocker arm in this case will not apply any pressure on that valve. So you could adjust the clearance between the rocker arm and the valve. This is the clearance that you look for. Always when you adjust the clearance or the lash of that valve, the valve need to be completely closed. I'm rebuilding this engine and I thought to show you this as example when you adjust your lash clearance for any valve. If you don't know the firing order, like I showed you, you could remove the spar plug or the injector and put your finger on the hole of the injector or the spar plug and rotate the engine. And then when you start feeling the pressure, what that tell you, that tell you both valves are set to the compression stroke and the piston is coming up. So you keep checking it with uh, any type of tool until you feel the piston is all the way to the top. And you keep adjusting it until you feel it like this. And then you set the lashes for those valves. The engine and the engine compartment is very clean. You need to make sure to do that. You need to also remove anything in your way. You need to have as much room as possible. I removed the harness cable over here. It was connected to the front of the engine and it's laying right there. I already loosened all these valve covers and I mark them because I have six of them. A lot of engines, they only have one cover to cover everything. It's a good idea to mark them. Also, it's a good idea to buy a new gasket or seal to replace the seals on the valve covers. So this way you will prevent leak. I'll set the camera maybe over here above the radiator and I show you how to set everything. This engine has a special tool. You could remove this rubber piece and you could insert this special tool to rotate the engine. The way I'm going to do it, I'm going to use one of the bolts over here. There's three of them to keep this pulley in place. And I'm going to rotate the engine this way. If this gas engine, you have to remove the spar plug. If diesel, you have to remove the injectors. To identify the valve, the one that line up with the exhaust part, it's the exhaust valve, and the other one is the intake valve. I will set the intake to 10,000 and the exhaust to 20,000. In this situation, you have to do each cylinder individually. I will rotate the crank and I will check the pressure over here. 
if this is a spark plug port, I'll hold it with my finger. If it's injector, which this way this is, I'll hold it with my finger or injector port, and I'll rotate the engine until I start feeling the pressure. Right there. You take something small enough to fit inside the inner hole of the injector or if it's power plug, same thing. Make sure it fits all the way to the top of the piston. And be careful. Make sure this continue to come vertically because if you put it on a bind, it may damage the thread. Start coming back down. Right there. This is the very top of the piston. And now these two valves ready to be adjusted. We'll test them first. I have the 20,000 over here and the 10,000 over here. I have too much over here. I could move this with the feeler gauge underneath it. And same thing on this one. All right, now it's stopped. Now the filler gauge is stopped. You lose it just until it's free, where it doesn't apply any pressure on the valve spring. Perfect. And now I do the exhaust. 20 thousands. Right there where it stopped. Right there. They still feel right. After you're done, you torque the nuts to specification.
Recheck one last time. This one moved a little bit. This one done, and now I need to continue do the rest of them. I'm not going to record all of them. I don't want the video to be unnecessary too long, but you get the idea. I cleaned all the covers with diesel, and then I blew them with air. They're very clean. And I'm going to replace the old seals with this new one I bought online, and these come with the O-rings for these bolts. It's very good idea to change the oil filter and flush the engine oil after you do this procedure, just in case a contaminant got inside the engine, so you flush it out.